late night video, so I actually can try to take tomorrow off. We'll see. I don't know if they have practice tomorrow or not. Uh, lots to talk about. Got a comment of the day. Got signings. I'm going to break down Eli Apple's contract. We're going to talk about in the comment of the day, Tua getting on the offense, what that means. Before we get into the intro, I want to shout out my guy, Michael Heikis. It is his grandmother's birthday anniversary. And I, they both were. Well, she was, and he is a very big Miami Dolphin fan, so I want to shout him out and obviously say, uh, I think I'm a day late on her birthday, but I want to say happy birthday to her, the late, great, and Michael, what is up, bud? Hope you're having a fantastic day. Now, let's jump into this. What is up? Finn fans, yes, this is a late video. It is now currently 11.30 while I'm recording it, but there were some things I wanted to talk about. The Dolphins made a move signing a defensive tackle. Um, I want to look at Eli Apple's contract a little bit. Uh, and then one of you guys had a very good comment of the day that involves Tua Tungavailoa and talking to the offense. So we're going to look at that video and then kind of talk about it. So let's jump into this and let's jump into this. The Miami Dolphins uh, made a roster move. They have signed defensive tackle Deshaun Hand and have waived Anthony Montova, Montovo. Um, they, we've heard Vic Fangio talking about the depth on the defensive line and how there needs to be some depth. Now, this is a surprising move, right? And we're going to talk about uh, Deshaun Hand in like two seconds. But this is a little bit of a, a surprising move to me because... There are some pretty good, like Akeem Hicks and Dominic and Sue. Like, maybe they want more money because I bet you Deshaun Hand is going to get a similar contract to Eli Apple, which we're going to look at in two seconds. But I'm surprised they didn't go for someone like that. Go for more of a, a known, better player. Because if we look at Deshaun Hand and we look at his um, uh, PFF, it's not too great. Right, the things that really stick out to me um, was his four eight three speed at the combine. He's six foot three, two ninety seven. You look at his first year in Detroit; it was pretty good. His defense, his run defense, his tackling, his his pass rush was up there. Right, he had three sacks. Um, this is where he got most of his work. Even in twenty twenty, got a lot of work. But again, after his rookie year, kind of went down. Only had one year with three sacks. Other than that, no sacks. Um, the stops weren't really there. Missed tackles kind of got a little high in the second year. Um, to me, it's kind of a camp body. It's like, all right, let's pr try to bring a new guy in. Let's see what he can do. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I expect it to be like... Eli Apple's contract. Uh, I'm not going to be like, yeah, they got some real great depth. Like, I was hoping for Akeem Hicks, but again, he might be wanting money, and the Dolphins right now are sitting after the Eli Apple contract at about $11 million in cap space. I'll show you why, because they were sitting a little over 12 and Eli Apple's contract is nothing. A whole lot of nothing. This is the Eli Apple's contract. He signed a one-year, $1.6 million contract. $250,000 signing bonus, uh, $500,000 guaranteed, um, essentially guaranteed. It was guaranteed at signing, and it's his total guaranteed. He is, the cap hit is $1.578 million, but again, it's $500,000 guaranteed. So they can cut him and save $1,078,000. You just take the $500,000 off of it. Plain and simple. You can trade him and you save a little bit more, but no one's going to trade for him. So he doesn't make the roster. It's no harm, no foul. Hey, we gave you $500,000 for trying out with us. It didn't work out. We'll see you later. Um, so this signing was just... And that's probably why they went with Eli Apple and probably why they went with Hand because they weren't asking for an arm and a leg because there's things that the Miami Dolphins have to do. They have to w worry about holding on to some cap space for... God forbid, injuries. That's why Eli Apple got signed. They have to re-sign their own guys. 
and start finagling the cap there with you know bringing in Christian Wilkins and seeing if they can take some of his money and turn it into a signing bonus of karate moves. Same thing with other things. So there's a lot of things they got to do with money, and their thought process is we're not going to overpay for depth. So these two moves, you know, Eli Apple is actually doing pretty well in camp, but we'll see. I want to see what happens on Tuesday and Wednesday with the joint practice against the Falcons. You're going to be going up against some pretty good guys over there. And then same thing with Sean Hand. To me, these two moves are depths. But I want to get to comment of the day because comment of the day is probably a big portion of this video. And I might make it the title of the video. And this is comment of the day. This comment comes from leave it to the wolves. And he says, comment of the day, Doug, I'm sure you've seen the video of Tua being very animate with the offense. How did you feel uh, seeing it? Me? I absolutely love seeing it. It shows Tua taking charge and expressing uh, his displeasure with his offense. He looked pissed. So if you guys haven't seen it, I'm going to um, pop it up and we're going to watch it. So he's doing all this, all that. We'll watch it again. It looks like he's like. I'm not gonna try to, you know, tell you what he's saying. Like right here, it looks like these are wide receiver moves. Um. But here's my thoughts on this, right? Because I didn't really talk about it um, when I did the training and when I did the scrimmage video uh, yesterday. If you're watching this Sunday night, if you're watching it Monday morning, Saturday, because it's a quarterback leading his team. Now, is he standing there saying, you guys suck. You suck. You suck. You suck. You all suck. I'm carrying this team. I'm the best on the field. You all suck butt, and I'm the best. You got to step it up to what I'm doing, because if not, we're going to lose because of you guys. No. Some people don't like the fact that he is doing what he was doing, um, because he also had a bad day um, on Saturday, yesterday for me. Uh, he didn't look great. The whole offense didn't look great. There's not one aspect of that team. There was drops. There was the offensive line looked sloppy. The run game wasn't really there with some of the injuries. The quarterbacks were playing sloppy. Um, it, it just is what it is, but he's the captain. He's the leader of the team. And that probably was him saying, we got to do better. The defense is kicking our butt. We all got to step out there, do better, do, you know, he's taking lead. He's taking control of the offense and being a captain and being their quarterback and being the franchise leader. I'm glad to see that. Now we don't know what he's saying, so we uh, don't speculate that he's you know shooting people down and praising himself. He's probably saying, "I suck too. We all got to do better." Um, but I like it. I like that he is not like, "All right, we'll, we'll do better next time." Come on, guys. You know, you know, rest in peace. But the Tony Sperano, you know, field goal clap. He's not doing that. He's like, "Come on, guys. We did so well last year. We got to do better this year. This is our year. Yada yada da da da. Ra ra ra. So I'm I'm not angry with it. I don't think he is putting anyone down. I don't think he's praising himself. I don't. You know. Hey, if I was on a football team and I was sucking and I felt I was sucking and I felt that the whole offense was sucking, I would say something. I'd be like, guys, we got to get our stuff together. I would obviously be a little bit more. PG-13, uh, but I'd be like, we got to get our stuff together. And that's probably what he's saying. Someone's got to step up. Someone's got to be that leader. And from what I'm hearing from the reporters in that locker room, what I'm hearing from the players, they listen to him, right? There's a different atmosphere in that locker room. It's not like Jay Cutler. Remember when we got Jay Cutler and he just didn't care. He didn't care at all. He was like, ah, whatever. I don't give a crap. He was smoking cigarettes on the side. He wasn't smoking cigarettes on the side. Like, but there's the meme of that. It's different. This guy has constantly put his body on the line. And he's tried. He's run through players to try to get us in scoring position. And he's doing things and extending plays. And, you know, doing sometimes it's dumb of him. But he's still trying to make these things happen. So, that's your captain. It's the offensive captain. That's what the offensive captain does. 
So if you if you have a problem with him doing that, and if you're like, he shouldn't do that because he sucked too, that's not how football works. <laughs> because I'm 100% sure he's taking accountability for his crap and telling everybody we need to get our stuff together because we look like garbage. Not you need to get your stuff together because you look like garbage. Like, come on, let's let's take the agendas, put it aside, and let's root for this Miami Dolphin team. There's too much. I'm going to go on a little tangent. There's too much agendas. There's too much people poo-pooing on Tua and, oh, look, you threw in a... Like, there, I just notice agendas on Twitter, in the comment section, on Facebook, everywhere. There's agendas. There's bias. Oh, look, Tua, 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 he's bad, he's bad. Like, but then, oh, he's doing so, like, there's just, oh, we're going to bring up Skyler, we're going to crush Tua, or we're going to bring up Tua, we're going to crush Sky. There's all these agendas. Let's just root for the Miami Dolphins. Let's root for the logo. And stop with the agendas, and stop with the bias, and stop with, I'm just noticing things, and I'm like, why? If he does good, Talk about what he did good. Keep doing that, Tua. If he does bad, talk about what he does bad and say, we need to stop, you know, we he needs to work on that. Instead of harping on the bad and then being like, yeah, that good, it was all right. But the good was because of this, not necessarily because of Tua, but that bad, that was all Tua. And then the flip, you know, it, there's there's so many agendas I see and it just, it's funny. It's funny. I it's And it's so blatantly obvious, these agendas. And it's just, it makes me laugh. I just need to say it because that video of Tua essentially addressing the offense about how they're all playing bad, him included, brought out some agendas that I noticed. That's all I'm going to say. And I'm not talking about anyone specific because I notice sometimes when I say these things, people go in the comment section and are like, oh, you're talking about da-da-da. No, I'm just noticing things. You kind of, you ever just kind of like in a cafeteria when you were in high school, you ever just kind of sit back and just watch people? And you kind of just notice things. And you're like, hmm, I'm just noticing things. I'm not talking about someone specific. But comment below. Let me know what you think. What do you think about Tua talking to the offense, kind of addressing how garbage they played on the scrimmage? What's your thoughts about bringing in Deshaun Hand? Are you with me that it's just kind of a cap move? Not a cap move, but a depth move. What's your thoughts on Eli Apple's contract? I think it's just a, hey, try out. If you don't make it. No harm, no foul. Comment below, and I will see you guys maybe tomorrow. I, I keep saying I'm going to take a break. But I think they're going to practice tomorrow. I think it's just not open to the public because they practice open to the public Tuesday and Wednesday, then not Thursday because they have a preseason game on Friday. And then I think that's it. And they go to Houston for the joint practice the 16th and 17th. So I'm pretty sure, like, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, the 13th, 14th, 15th, there's practice. But I don't think it's open to the public. It's not open up to the public again till the 23rd. So after the 9th, it's not open up to the public again till the 23rd, and it's just two days. So I'm pretty sure they're practicing more. So, again, if they practice tomorrow and I get news and notes and all that stuff, you're going to get a video tomorrow. If not, if nothing happens and it is radio silent, I'm going to take a break, but it's hard for me to take a break because this is fun, and I love you guys, guys and girls, just lump you all together, but I'll see you guys in the next video, but like usual, stay classy, I've been top.